Hello and welcome to the first solution video for Advent of Code 2021 and we're talking about day one here which uh, is usually the easiest problem but uh, figured I'd go through my approach anyway. Uh, let's jump into it. And uh, again since I can't show the actual pros of the problem since it's copywritten and uh, generally Eric doesn't want you to redistribute his pros, I have simplified the problem down to just what you want to think about when, when dealing with this. And uh, our input is a list of numbers. This is the sample input from the problem. And in part one, it asks us to count the number of times each number increases. And see, like this starts at 199, goes to 200. So this is one increase there, two increases, et cetera, et cetera. And so we need to compute how many that is. In this sample input, it is seven. Um, and let's walk through how I would go about doing this. So the first thing that I would do here is split this input into lines and parse them into numbers. And I could do this lazily, but I'm just gonna do it up front because you know the, the code's straightforward enough to do that. Uh, and so we can just say numbers equals uh, int for of int of line for line in input s dot split lines. Now we'll probably see this same pattern used quite a lot throughout advent of code, but um, yeah, this is just one way to do this. I could also do this as a for loop and iterate uh, you know, each line, but we'll do it this way. And let's start with kind of how I thought about this problem initially, and then I can show you a few optimizations here. So how I initially thought about this is by setting a previous number uh, and starting that with number zero and then doing for uh, n in numbers one colon. So look at every other number, keep track of a previous number here. And if n is greater than previous, then we know that we increase our count. So we'll do count plus equals one, and then we set previous to n. Uh, so what this will allow us to do is like, as we iterate through each number, if we get bigger, we increment the count. And other than that, we keep track of our previous number here. And if we run this, uh, you'll see that we get the right number here. So this, this algorithm does work. Um, and before we simplify it, let's, I guess, talk about the algorithmic efficiency. So this is, um, you know, linear in space here, you could do better and do, uh, you know, if you processed each line one at a time, you could have a constant space overhead instead of a linear space overhead. I just did this because it's convenient and easier to describe the problem. Uh, this is also sneakily a linear space overhead. You could, of course, use iter tools. Um, I've, I've talked about this in, in previous problem or in previous videos as well. Um, and beyond that, it is a linear scan. So it's O n in time, and this is O n in space, but we could get it down to O one in space if we wanted to. Um, let's actually show a way to simplify this problem a little bit further. And this is actually, I went back and revised my solution to end up at this one. And for that, we actually don't really need to keep track of this previous. We can just keep track of the indices we use here. We can do four i in range uh, and <laughs> I realize that I have a video on my channel that says don't use 4i in range len, but it's convenient for this problem, so why not? Uh, and in this case, we can just do count, let's see, if numbers i is greater than numbers i minus 1, then count plus equals 1. So this is a slightly you know, shorter code way to implement this. It should be the same. And of course, we get seven again. And we can actually simplify this even further by using a list comprehension. So uh, let's just do sum. And uh, list comprehensions are really just, uh, you know, for loops, but spread out into into uh, their own lines. So this is this is the equivalent list comprehension there. Um, and actually, since Booleans are numbers, we can actually just do this. A little bit cheeky, but it does work. Um, and so that's part one, where we're just looking back at the previous number. Uh, part two changes up this problem a little bit. I guess I should just do one. Okay. We can have the same code in the same file. Part two talks about a sliding window. Now, if you're not familiar with a sliding window, I've drawn a little paint diagram for us. And generally what a sliding window means is you're looking at some sum of values 
and that sum of values slide. So this is the first chunk you'll look at. This is the second chunk you'll look at, the third, the fourth, etc. cetera. Um, and you kind, of, you kind of slide your window along. Now the sliding wing window algorithm, or when applied to other things, the sliding window algorithm is a way to optimize scanning by only considering the numbers within your window. And the cool thing about this, the sum of the sliding window when switching from this position to uh, this position, let's color this something else so that we can differentiate the two. Like blue, whoops. <laughs> yeah, I still have follow notifications on. So the cool thing about moving from this sliding window to this sliding window is it's a simple math operation. Uh, we subtract out this number. We subtract this one. I guess red and green are maybe not the best colors to use, but uh, we'll use orange and purple, I guess. We subtract out this number, and we also um, add this number. And that maintains the same sum of that sliding window. And so if you, um, if you wanted to actually implement the sliding window yourself, you would start with an initial sum of the first three values. And then when you moved, you would subtract this and add this, and then subtract this and add this. And that would be how you slide the window along there. Uh, but a neat ob observation here is the sum is remaining the same for these two inner numbers, and it's really only differing between this number and this number. So you don't actually have to compute anything at all. You can just check if this number is bigger than this number, uh, because that means the sum will increase. And so in my solution, I basically just looked back three numbers, and if this number was bigger than that one, then we're done. We've, we've, found, we've found an increase there. Uh, otherwise, it's a decrease, and so we don't do that. And interestingly enough, with the way that we have structured this solution here, uh, we're already looking back one, so you can kind of think about it as a sliding window of one, which is, I guess, meaningless, but, um, but we can just change this one to a three, and that'll give us part two. We copy this, uh, and instead of looking back one, we're now looking back three. And if we run this now, we should get seven, and then, oh, say part two. Here we go. Cool. Uh, so that's how I approached day one of Advent of Code 2021. Hopefully this was interesting and I will see you back for day two.